Hello and welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller and I've got a fun and much different tutorial today for creating uh, 3D cartoon landscapes. Well one of the artists over at Renderosity whose name is Chris created the image here that uh, that I have displayed on my screen and I really like his style of cartoon landscapes and objects and uh, that he created here or at least rendered here in view. I like the organic shape that uh, his trees have and of course his castle is pretty cool too. Uh, we're not going to go into creating that but uh, it with I've, I've done a lot of looking around on the internet and from what I remember from cartoons and children's books you know you, uh, Cartoon landscapes always have these nice rounded uh, organic shapes with oftentimes very simple textures. Now I see Chris here has uh, some very complex textures, very uh, or rather detailed textures. Not too detailed. The, the idea is not to get it photorealistic. And I really like his textures, but I'm not going to go for that look today because I don't want to duplicate his art. But rather, I just want to use his creativity and his art as the basis for my inspiration. So, that's Chris's work over at Renderosity. You might want to go and check out his work and look at some of his uh, images. He's got a whole bunch of them. And uh, maybe leave a comment on some of them. Here is the scene that I created using his technique and his style as my inspiration and uh, in case you're wondering yes he did give me permission to display his image here in this video and I thank him for that uh, but in my image I went for a more simpler look uh, just for this tutorial and I'm using just very basic uh, simple textures and now I did create this texture here for these trees in photo paint and Photoshop and um, I will make that texture available for you to download and use in your images if you want. Um, one of the things that took me the longest time more than anything was coming up with uh, creating the atmosphere that w makes this look like a cartoon image. It took a lot of playing around till I got just the right settings, just the right shadow settings and the sky and uh, the clouds because I wanted to remove the realistic nature that, uh, that, that, that is so easily created in view and actually that was difficult trying to make, try, trying to dummy down all the atmospheric settings to make it look um, cartoonish like and it took me a while and this is the atmosphere that I came up with and I really like it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to also include these this atmosphere preset uh, for download as well so you can use it in your image so this is the project that we're gonna start off and create today and we're going to do that we're going to begin with hexagon what I want to do is start off by creating the tree. So I'm going to begin with a cube and I'm going to select the bottom face of that cube and delete it. Come over here to smoothing, enable one level of smoothing. I'm going to click on my lightning bolt here and commit that smoothing level. And now I'm just going to apply one more level of smoothing on top of that. And I'm going to come over here to select faces. I'm going to select these four up top and use my sweep surface tool and just create a bendy looking tree. Something, something simple. And now I'm just going to grab some of these edges here and loop them and just start to uh, taper down my tree and I'll be right back. There we are. Now what I want to do is come over here to select faces. I'm just going to select one of these faces here and I'm just going to use my sweep surface tool and I'm going to create some tree branches. 
spin around here on this one and select that face there we are spin around on this one and one more Okay, I'm just going to select the tops of each of these, enable my soft selection. I just got to figure out the right number here, and I just want to taper them down. Let me enable the, select these edges here. Taper that down. There we are. Select that. Probably want to increase my soft selection. Ooh, not quite that much. Anyway, I'm just going to taper these down, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've tapered all these down. And now what I want to do is stretch this one up a little bit. I guess I could enable soft selection. And just bring it up so it's about the same level. Uh, same height as the other ones. That's good. Okay, what I want to do now is uh, zero it out on its X and Z axis. Okay, doke. Now I'm going to name this trunk. I'm happy with that. I'll lock that into place. It doesn't move. Now I'll come over here to 3D primitives and select a sphere. Now I don't want to sphere with these polar coordinates because it has these points at the top and bottom. Ideally what I want is a sphere that has more of an even distribution of points and faces. So I'm going to select the geodesic sphere and nine points is fine. Validate that. And I'll center this right over my tree trunk. Okay. Let me hide my tree trunk. I'm going to spin around underneath this, and I'm going to select these two edges here. No soft selection. And these two edges here. I'm just going to loop that selection. I'm going to hit F on my keyboard to turn that selection into faces. And just select all these remaining ones like this. I'm going to hold down Shift and then hit the plus button on my numeric keypad to expand that selection just a little bit more. I'm going to hit soft selection now. Let me dial this radius up a little bit. And I want to expand, dial it up a little bit more. I want to expand the bottom of this. Now I will dial it down, expand a little bit more, dial it down, now that's about as much as I can. Now what I will do is I will flatten out the bottom. There we go. So it kind of looks like a scoop of ice cream. Okay, I'm going to apply one level of smoothing to that. Then I'm going to commit that level of smoothing. And now I'm going to apply one more. Come over here to select points and uh, hit Control and A. I want to select all those points. Now I'm going to right click, Advanced Selection, select 1 over N, and I'm going to uh, dial in a number that will give me a seemingly random selection of points. And this looks pretty good. I will validate that. I will enable Smooth Selection and bring out my radius here and because now what I want to do is I want to use my scaling and I want to increase the scale of those bumps give it sort of a knobby look and I like that now I'm going to hit control A to select all my points again come over here to 1 over N and make another selection 
Ideally, what I want to stay away from is a selection like this here, where all these points are selected in a row. That would be kind of obvious. It wouldn't appear very random. And that looks good. Validate that. Now I'll just expand that selection a little bit as well. And I think I will come over and do um, select all of them again and use my one over in tool. Eleven, that'll work. And let's expand those. So let's click off of it. You got a nice uh, lumpy ice cream cone. Neat looking little tree. All right, what I want to do is select that. I'm going to come over here to my utilities and I'm going to select the taper tool. And I want to make sure I'm on the Y axis. And I want to bring the top in just a little bit, like that. Validate that. Come back to my taper tool. Well, actually, you know what? I want the bottom to be a little bit wider, so I think I will make that selection of edges again. Loop that and loop that one. There we are. Change that to faces and select all these in here. Yeah, I think I want the bottom to be a little bit wider. Perhaps I didn't do that enough the first time. So I will be right back. Okay, I've got the selection I want. Now let's grow this out a little bit more. There we are. That'll work. Okay, we've tapered the top. Now let's come down here to the Bend tool. Of course, I'll want to have my canopy of leaves selected. I want to come here to the Bend tool. What I want to do is not use the Y axis. I'm going to come over here to the X axis. Now I can only move these uh, sides here that are yellow. So I want to bend this down. I want to bend the other side down, and I like that. I'll validate that. I want to rotate this 180 degrees. Come back to my taper tool, and I want to switch to my z-axis now. And I want to bend this side down as well. Essentially, it creates a little canopy, kind of like an umbrella. We're going for cartoon look here. And I like that. So let's squash this down a little bit. And I'm going to call this leaves. Let's bring our trunk back into our image. And there is our cartoon tree. I'm happy with that. I will export that to my desktop. Name it tree. Do I want to replace it? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. And we are done here in Hexagon with our tree. But there's one more thing I want to do. When I installed Hexagon, the latest update of Hexagon, it created a DAS folder. Inside that is a Hexagon folder. And I've also got these models here. Well, I want to use one of the models that came with Hexagon. So I'm going to open up my Models folder, click on Exterior, and I want to use this Little House Number 2. This is the one I used in the example image that I created. And I want to ungroup that. I want to select the house and call it House because it'll make it easier to identify when we get into view. 
and I want to click on this doorknob here click on vertex modeling and I want to close that off yes and validate that okay so now my doorknob is solid now what I want to do is just export this to my desktop house there we are save that and we are done in hexagon and we're gonna finish up in view so that's it for this tutorial we will finish up with some textures and creating the scene and uh, using the atmosphere preset that uh, I will make available in view so hope to see you on the next one so thanks for watching here at Geek and Play Studios my name is Gary Miller have a good day